Syracuse basketball has hired a general manager and the Orange have added at least one game to its non-conference slate next season. Let's talk about it. You are locked on Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and thank you for making us your first listen of every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's show, we are going over Syracuse basketball hiring a general manager, Alex Klein, to its staff, a brand new position at Syracuse and the Orange have also added at least one game to its non-conference slate and are rumored to be adding another. So tons to go over here on today's podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started so Syracuse basketball hires a general manager let's go over that what exactly is a general manager in college athletics what is it I think that's the first thing you guys are asking because we all know what it really is in pro sports at least for the most part right like that's the person who gets to make all the trades all the free agent signings and all the drafting all that stuff that aside from actually playing a sport is every little kid's dream is to make all the decisions that affect a team, right? That's what it is in pro sports. In college sports, this is a brand new position being added. Alex Klein is the one who now has it for Syracuse recently hired. From the university website, this is, quote, a new position, the general manager will support Coach Autry in managing various aspects of of the men's basketball program at Syracuse. The primary responsibilities will include scouting and recruiting, former student athlete man or student athlete engagement, name, image, and likeness opportunities, transfer portal management, and institutional fundraising in collaboration with university advancement. I know that is a mouthful for you guys. So the way I would kind of dummy it down is this is someone who is going to be in charge of finding the next great Syracuse basketball players, both in the transfer portal and recruiting out of high school as well, while also trying to find NIL opportunities and fundraising opportunities. That's what it is from that whole mouthful that I just gave you guys. As stated, this is the first time that Syracuse has hired a general manager. This is a brand new position, and it's really pretty brand new across all of college athletics. I looked at some schools that have recently hired general managers. St. John's is one that popped up. They hired one last year, and Utah hired one just a couple months ago. So those are just a few schools that have hired general managers. There's more Across the country, I saw a rumor that Kentucky might be adding one as well. This is a necessary position now with the state of college athletics. Back in the day, college coaches were the ones who were responsible for getting players to come to their program, but there was no transfer portal and there was no NIL opportunities. So it was purely... Wink, wink. I can't really wink well, but you get the idea. Purely about the basketball, the football, or whatever sport of your choosing when it came to recruiting. That's what it was. Nowadays, with the transfer portal and NIL, this is a lot for coaches to be able to handle. Coaches have already come out and said how much they dislike everything because it is a lot that is out there, though, that coaches, for the most part, are not very happy with the current system going on. And so these schools are starting to hire general managers to help oversee everything. And what this allows Coach Autry to do, along with any other coach in the country, is it allows them to focus primarily on coaching, right? So Coach Coach Autry's expertise is coaching, right? Coaching basketball. He can focus on that. And also 
recruit on face value. So he doesn't have to do the one. He doesn't have to be the one that's filtering everything. He can have Alex Klein, the general manager of the team, go out, find players that could be useful to Syracuse, and then tell Coach Autry about it. And then Coach Autry goes to see the player. Instead of Coach Autry having to do the filtering himself, Alex Klein can be in charge of doing some of that filtering. So it makes a lot of sense for Syracuse to hire a general manager. This is a new development in college athletics, but as I said, it is certainly a necessary one as the wild, wild west, it's not going away. If anything, it's going to be even more deregulized. I I did not say that right, but you get the idea. I know people want regulation put in place. I don't see that really happening. It wasn't really that long ago when the transfer portal, it used to be where if you decided to transfer, you had to sit out a year. And nowadays you can't even envision a world where that's where it's like that anymore. That that's just not the case, right? You could transfer nilly dilly as you want. That's just how college athletics is. NIL has exploded in recent years since it became legal. Now colleges are allowed to actually pay players directly, which was never a thing. And the whole point of amateur athletics was that they don't get paid by the university. Now, all of a sudden, because of the recent court ruling, that is the case where they are allowed to be paid by the university directly. So overall, a general manager is a necessary step in college athletics. I would recommend every school hire one because to ask these coaches to do all this is a lot. So having a general manager is certainly helpful, and Syracuse is getting in on the trend with Alex Klein. Now coming up, I'm going to talk a little bit about Alex Klein and his qualifications to be the general manager because this guy is kind of a superstar. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel's let me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. And if you're itching for football season like I am, guess what? FanDuel has released the odds for Syracuse football's first game against Ohio. The Orange are 15 and a half point favorites to get the W. You think the Orange are going to cover? Well, bet it right now on FanDuel. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the streaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, in the Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer. On today's show, we are going over Syracuse basketball, hiring a general manager to its staff. Alex Klein is the one who has the position now. And later on, I'm going to get to Syracuse basketball, adding at least one non-conference game and probably another very, very soon. So let's continue with Syracuse basketball, hiring a general manager. And let's go over who Alex Klein is, because this is the person that is now the general manager of Syracuse basketball, a brand new position that has been added. What are his qualifications? And why do I believe this guy is the right hire for Syracuse basketball? Well, first of all, he is a Syracuse alum. He graduated in 2016 as a broadcast and digital journalism major and a minor in sport management. So that just goes to show you that that is the greatest major and greatest minor in the world. Well, of course, that was my major and minor when I was at Syracuse. But, you know, it's the greatest. OK, he came from Syracuse. It has to be a good hire right off the bat. Right. But aside from that, here are his qualifications and why this guy I think he's the right hire. It makes a lot of sense given the job description and what he's actually done since leaving school and even before he got to college. 
Klein had been a stout with the New York Knicks in the past four years. I think the Knicks have been pretty successful in the last four years, given what the Knicks had been for most of my childhood. They have been basically the best team ever because they were so bad for most of my childhood. I don't really remember a world where the Knicks were were really good. That's mostly reserved for my mother and father. But the Knicks have been good the past four years. Don't know how much Alex Klein really had to do with that, but he was with the organization as a scout. And scouting is part of what he's going to have to do at Syracuse, so it makes sense. And before that, he was with the New Orleans Pelicans as a basketball operations assistant for four years. So Alex Klein has been in the NBA for the past eight years, and now he's going back to Syracuse to be its general manager. Makes a lot of sense. Right off the bat, this is someone who has been in the NBA. He could take that expertise and maybe bring it over to college, even though they're not exactly the same. But stouting and dealing with some finances and recruiting, it's pretty similar. It's kind of close to what he's going to probably have to do at Syracuse. In 2010, so this is when Alex Klein was still in high school, He founded what is known as the Recruiting Scoop, and now that site is affiliated with Yahoo Sports and Rivals. So he built a site that Rivals, which is a recruiting service, took interest in and Yahoo Sports. And I think we all know what Yahoo Sports is. Pretty, pretty impressive stuff from Alex Klein. Also, little neat fact about him. Alex Klein was named to Forbes's 30 under 30 list in 2013 and in 2014. Now, some notable people who have been on Forbes's 30 under 30 list include, but are not limited to, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, and LeBron James. So if you are in a club with LeBron James and Mark Zuckerberg, you're doing something right. Alex Klein was named to Forbes' 30 under 30 list twice in 2013 and 2014. Pretty impressive. That's all I'll say. Very, very impressive stuff. And as I said, he graduated from Syracuse in 2016. It honestly seems like after I read a little bit about Alex Klein and I gathered my thoughts about him, I don't know how much of an impact he's honestly going to have at Syracuse. I really don't. It is a brand new position. It's brand new. This has never been done at Syracuse before. So there is no precedent out there that suggests that it's going to be a good thing for the program or a bad thing for the program. It's not out there. I don't, I don't know. Nobody actually knows how this is really going to shape out until maybe a few years from now. But if we're looking at, The trend in college sports, as I have already said repeatedly on this podcast, and if you look at Alex Klein's qualifications and you look at what they're looking for in a general manager at the school, all the dots seem to connect. That Alex Klein seems to be the right hire for Syracuse basketball to be their general manager. Eight years of NBA experience, a graduate from Syracuse, that helps as well. Right, He's been with the school before. He knows it inside and out. He was on Forbes' 30 under 30 list. I already told you some of the famous names that have been on there. And he founded a recruiting website that that is now affiliated with Rivals and Yahoo Sports. So Alex Klein, will I say it's a home run hire? I, I, I guess. But I don't know. It's one of those things I just don't know, but it connects. The dots connect. They're looking for a general manager, and they hired someone, and I looked at it, and I'm like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense for what they're probably going to ask him to do. So overall, I'm pretty pleased. I'm optimistic. I'm hopeful that Alex Klein can help this program out. Hey, helping the program is 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 helping the program. But overall, Alex Klein seems like someone who can 
help the program tremendously. He can take a load off of Adrian Autry and the rest of the coaching staff. He clearly has experience building websites and all that fun stuff, considering the fact that he founded one himself. So I'm pretty pleased. I am pretty pleased with the hire. I think it is the right move for Syracuse. And we'll see if it actually works out in the end. There's a chance that it doesn't work out. That's That goes with any hire that you ever make in the history of time. There is always that possibility that it will not work out, but I'm pretty hopeful that this one will work out and maybe not turn around Syracuse, right? I don't know if this is going to be the reason why Syracuse either turns it around or stays not great, but it's a step in the right direction. And while it might not be a causation, there might be a correlation between having a general manager and winning basketball games. So I think that kind of covers the discussion about the general manager with Syracuse University. Leave your thoughts below. What do you think of Alex Klein? And do you think that Syracuse basketball took a necessary step in hiring a general manager? So leave a comment below what your thoughts are on Syracuse's GM position. Now coming up, we're going to talk about couple of non-conference games may be coming to Syracuse basketball schedule. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Day is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Day now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Olzer, and on today's show, we have already covered the Orange hiring a general manager for basketball in Alex Klein. We went over how college athletics are changing, so this is necessary to have a GM, and the fact that it seems like Alex Klein is the perfect person for the role. And now it's time to talk about, well, staying with Syracuse basketball, potentially adding a couple of non-conference games to its schedule. So let's go over one that has first been confirmed. This coming from Rocco Miller. He reports that Syracuse basketball will host Youngstown State on November 16th. That's part of its non-conference schedule. So once again, Youngstown State on November 16th. It's a home game for Syracuse basketball. So that's another game that's added to its non-conference slate. This is another one that has been in the rumor mill for quite a while because it makes sense for the two schools to pair together. But Chris Carlson from the Post Standard, he reported recently that the Orange are in talks with LeMoyne to have a non-conference game against each other. So you got one game confirmed against Youngstown State. That is such a hard word. That is so hard to say. That is like a tongue twister. Youngstown State is confirmed and LeMoyne is unconfirmed, but certainly possible. Here are my thoughts about these two schools. I'm going to assume that both of them will be on Syracuse's non-conference slate next season. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. I'm in a good mood today, I guess, because everything's all peachy, roses, and all good. This is perfect. This is exactly what I'm talking about to add in your non-ACC games from here on out. This is exactly what Syracuse needed to do. You need more cupcakes. You need cupcakes to the schedule. Youngstown State, that's a cupcake. You got to win that game on November 16th. That is a circled win. And LeMoyne, that's also a circled win. If you don't beat LeMoyne, we got a problem. Especially if you don't beat LeMoyne. You got to beat LeMoyne. So these are two cupcake games. It makes a lot of sense to add these cupcakes because, listen, this non-conference slate for Syracuse is not getting any easier. Did you guys happen to catch the news recently with Texas? Texas basketball? Because Syracuse is probably might have to play Texas in the Legends Classic. They're probably they're going to have to play one of Texas or Texas Tech. Okay. But did you catch the news with Texas? They recently added someone in the transfer portal. His name is Arthur Kaluma. He is a four-star transfer. They added him late, but better late than never. 
And so now that roster is even better than what it was before. Arthur Kaluma, a four-star transfer, former Syracuse recruit. Syracuse tried to get Arthur Kaluma out of high school, and he's a very good college basketball player, and Texas just got him. It's not getting any easier. So what I mean by that is now Syracuse, as I said, when we I broke down the non-conference schedule for you guys maybe a couple weeks ago, and my thoughts of it, the overall takeaways. And then I said in the last part of it, what Syracuse still needs to add to it because they still need to add a couple of games to the schedule. And I said, point blank, they got enough challenges on the schedule. They got Texas and or Texas Tech. They got at Tennessee. That's going to be a tough one. Georgetown, they still suck. At home is not going to be as easy as it has been the past few seasons. They should be a much more improved team. There's others that I'm blanking on off the top of my head. Oh, Maryland, another one. Maryland's not going to be an easy game. They got challenges in their non-conference schedule. My point was they need to add more circled wins. Games that you're playing because you need to play a certain amount of games. Point blank. So, Youngstown State... I said that right this time. And LeMoyne kind of, they, they fit the profile. They fit the profile of teams that are Division One, so they will count. But you should definitely beat them. Now, as far as the key in those games, the key will not necessarily beating them. Now, obviously, like you cannot lose them. But it's also too, as I have said before, you want to make sure you blow them out. You got to blow out these teams. Last year, Syracuse blew out Shamana by 50, which would have been great if Shamana was a Division I team, but they were not. So it didn't count towards the net. These teams will count towards the net. They will count. So you want to blow them out because they are teams that you are expected to to blow out right like if Syracuse beat Maryland in a blowout that would be unbelievable but really Syracuse all I have to do against Maryland is is hopefully win the game and with Tennessee it'd be great if they could win but with Tennessee you're kind of like if they can keep it close that would be fine too just keep it close it won't hurt it won't hurt them that much in the net but when it comes to these two games like Youngstown State and Lemoyne yeah you have to obviously win like that is like priority number one it's kind of like being in a bunker in golf, like priority number one is getting the ball out of the bunker. And then pri- and priority number two is getting it close to the hole. When it comes to these games against Youngstown State and LeMoyne, priority number one is win, but then priority number two is win big. You have to win big, right? You don't want to win by five points, seven points, 10 points, and then all of a sudden it hurts the net the net will take point differential into account. So you have to make sure that when you're playing these inferior teams, you blow them out. Blow them out of the water. So once again, Rocco Miller recently reported that Syracuse basketball is going to play Youngstown State on November 16th. That is going to be a home game for Syracuse basketball and its non-conference games. And Chris Carlson from the Post Standard recently reported that Syracuse and LeMoyne are in talks for a non-ACC game as well. So the Orange could be having, they have one confirmed non-conference game added and could have another one all the, on the way. And I will, of course, let you guys know when Syracuse either adds LeMoyne or adds any other team to its non-conference slate. They still need to add, by my count, two more, not including LeMoyne, to its non-conference games. I believe two more is what's needed. But anyways, that is it for today's podcast. We went over Syracuse basketball hiring a general manager in Alex Klein. So we talked about that. Then we have now discussed recently Syracuse adding a couple of games potentially to its non-conference slate. So that is it for today's podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this video, click that like button. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you know right away when I am dropping the next podcast. Tomorrow's episode is going to be a Syracuse football recruiting one once again. Lots of 
recruits coming in, some decommits, mainly Charlande and Strange. They're only four-star recruit in the class of 2025, so that's not good. And, of course, Malik Washington, the four-star quarterback that we were hoping was coming to Syracuse, did not pick Syracuse. He decided to go to Maryland. I obviously wish him the best of luck, but we'll go over everything on tomorrow's ep episode when it comes to Syracuse football recruiting. Everyone have a great rest of your evening.